Hey everybody, Mr. Mathlog here. This uh, lesson is line plot. So we're starting chapter 9. You should be in the springtime, I'm, I'm guessing, and uh, hopefully your weather's nice. Don't forget all your lessons can be uh, found at mrmathlog.com. Alright, so here's our common core strand. We're going to uh, uh, represent and interpret data with plots in this one, line plot. So our question is, how can a line plot help us find the average with data uh, given in fractions. Okay, so let's just uh, go back and review a little bit here. So to find the average of these four numbers, 36, 48, 64, and 52, now we're going to actually be doing these with fractions, but we'll be okay with them. So remember, we first add the numbers. We have to add them up, and so I chose to add these two guys together because they give us a nice compatible number of 100. And these two guys, if we add those together, that's another 100 right there. So all four of those numbers are going to add up to 200. You can add 36 plus 48 and then add 64 and then add 52, but it'll add up to 200. And then do you remember what we do with that to find the average? We take that sum, the 200, and we divide it by the number of numbers. So the average of these four numbers is 50. Okay, we're going to be doing that with fractions here. So there they are. So students have measured um, uh, different amounts of water in beakers for an experiment. The amount of water in each beaker is listed below. So it looks like we see a fourth of a cup, a fourth of a cup, here's a half, here's a three-fourths, and some more of those right there. So what we're going to do here is uh, if the total amount of water stays the same, what would the average amount of water in each beaker uh, be on this? So, so we're going to add up all these numbers and divide by the number of numbers. And it looks like there's 12 numbers there. Let's see, we'll count the top row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, there's 12 numbers there. So we're going to add them all up and then divide by the number of numbers. Okay, but they want us to create what's called a line plot. So we're going to count up the number of cups for each amount, and we're going to draw an X uh, for the number of times. This is our number symbol right here. Okay, so for the number of times each amount is recorded on the line plot. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the one-fourth. So we'll count them all up. I highlighted, I highlighted them in red right there, and it looks like there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so over here we have seven X's above the one-fourth right here. Now we're going to do the same thing with the half. So we'll highlight the halves now in red, and there's only two of them right there. So there's only two X's down here. And then the three-quarter cups, I think there's three of them right here. So let's highlight those, and then we'll put three X's over here. All right, so, so how many of them are there? Well, on the one-fourth cups, there were seven of them. On the one-half cups, there were two of them. And then there were three of them on the three-fourths cups. So that's what we're going to put on those little blanks right there. And then, uh, so now we're going to find the total amount in each of the one-fourth cups, and then the one-half cups, and then the three-fourths cups. So let's first find the total amount of water in the beakers that contain a fourth of a cup. Okay, there were seven beakers that had a fourth of a cup right there, so there are seven-fourths right there. And to write that as a fraction, we'd write it like that. That says seven-fourths. Okay, now let's change this to a mixed number. Four goes into seven one time. Or you can think of this, you guys. Seven-fourths is the same as four-fourths plus three-fourths. And four-fourths is one. That's where this one came from right here. And here's the three-fourths right there. Okay, so one and three-fourths. All right, let me shrink all that up. Now let's do the same thing. Um, uh, with uh, the one half cups right here. So how many beakers have uh, a half a cup in them? There's two of them right here. Or we can look at that right there. Okay, so there's two of them. Uh, so there are two halves, and two halves is the same as one right there. So we're going to use this number when we find the average. Remember, when we find the average, we're going to add these numbers up and divide by how many beakers there were. Okay, lastly, let's find the total amount in three-fourths cups. Okay, there's three of them, so we'll just multiply three times three-fourths. That's going to give us nine-fourths right there, or two and one-fourth. Remember, nine-fourths is four-fourths plus four-fourths, which is eight-fourths plus one more-fourth. This is one, this is one, those add up to that two right there. Okay, all right, so now we got to add to find the total amount of water in all the beakers, okay? So before we find the average, we have to add them all up. Okay, so we're going to add, here's the quarter cups, here's the half cup, and here's the three-fourths cup, or three-quarters cup right there. All right, I'm going to add the whole numbers together, and then add the fractions together. So 
get rid of that stuff. We don't need that anymore. So 1 plus 1 plus 2. Now this 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is another 4 fourths, which is 1 right there. Okay, so that's going to give us um, uh, 4 plus this 4 fourths right there, which is 5 right there. Okay, now that's the sum of all the beakers. Do you remember what we do when we find the sum to get the average? We divide by the number of uh, beakers there were. So to find the average, now we divide the sum we found by the total number of beakers. All right, so here's all the beakers, and there were 12 of them. So we're going to take that 5 and divide it by 12. And uh, remember, division is just a fraction. So this is the numerator, and this is the denominator. So 5 divided by 12 is the same as 5 twelfths. Okay, always answer the, the question in the context of the problem. So the average amount of water in a beaker is uh, 5 twelfths of a cup. Okay, all right, so here's a different way, you guys. We can use order of operations to find the average. So solve the problem as a series of expressions that use parentheses and brackets to separate them. And then we'll perform the operations from the inside of the parentheses to the outer bracket. So we'll do this one, this one, and this one first. That's what goes in this guy right here. And then we'll do the brackets next, okay? So let's go one step at a time here. So do the inside parentheses first, okay? So 7 times 1 fourth, this is 7 over 1, so this is going to get us 7 fourths right here. 2 times a half, well, that's just uh, 2 halves or 1 right there. And this is going to be 3 times 3 fourths, which is 9 fourths. You only multiply the numerator, okay? All right, there's the 9 fourths. And then so when we add all of those up, I went ahead and added 7 fourths plus 9 fourths. That gets us... Um, uh, 16 fourths right there. So 7 fourths plus 9 fourths is 16 fourths. So this 4 plus this extra 1 right there is going to get us that 5. This is the same problem we just did. So 5 divided by 12 is, is 5 twelfths. Okay? All right, so here's another example. Sandra divides two uh, uh, I'm sorry, three two-pound bags of M&Ms into smaller bags. The first bag is divided into bags that weigh one-sixth of a pound each. The second bag, remember, there's, there's three bags, and all three bags are two pounds each. So the second two-pound bag is, um, is going to be divided into a third pound each, and the third two-pound bag, we're going to uh, cut that one up into a half of a pound each, okay? So... Here they want us to uh, find the number of one six pound bags, one third pound bags, and one half pound bags, and then graph the results on this line plot right here. Okay, let's slide that up. Okay, so we're going to find the number of the one six pound bags. So, oh yeah, let's write a title of this. It should describe what we're doing. Okay, this is the number of bags in M&Ms, something like that. So I put bags of M&Ms in pounds right there. Okay, should have put number of bags right there, but that's okay. So we write a title, and then the second thing we're going to do is um, uh, label the one-sixth, the one-third, and the one-half on the number line. Which one's bigger, you guys, one-sixth or one-half? When you're dealing with fractions, you guys, the smaller the denominator, the bigger the numeric value is. One-sixth is point one six something, I think. One-third is point three three three. One half is 0.5, so 0.5 is bigger than definitely this one or this one right here. So let's put the one sixth here, the one third, and the one half right here in order from smallest to biggest right there. Okay. So use division to find the number of bags in each. So remember the, the M&M bags, there were three two pound bags. So we're going to take uh, the two pounds and divide it by one sixth to find how many bags there are going to be. Take the two pounds and divide it by one third to find out how many one third bags. And similarly, to find out how many one half bags. Okay? Remember, keep, change, flip. So we keep this one the same. We change this to a multiplication and then we flip this. So this is going to be times six. This is going to be times 3. This is going to be times 2. So when you divide fractions, you keep, change, flip. So I said that in the last couple of videos in the last chapter. Okay, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. And then 2 times 2 is 4. All right, now we're going to draw an X above each uh, number to show how many of each bags there are. So I'm going to draw 12 X's going up here. We're going to draw 6 X's here. You can hear my coffee just finishing. And then 4 X's uh, right there. Okay, now they should be the same. This uh, this is six x's right here, and it should line up the same. Try and make them, uh, you know, the same, you guys. You know, uh, make your x's all the same size, so you can see it does a nice graph of how much more the other one is. Notice these ones are all lined up, these twos are all lined up, these threes are all lined up, 
and fours are all lined up, and then here's the fives, here's the sixes, and then here's the seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Uh, so explain why there were more one six pound bags of M&Ms than one half pound bags of M&Ms. Well, remember in the in the last uh, le chapter, you guys. Um, we spoke how when the quotient changes uh, when we divide by smaller numbers here. See, when we divided this guy by, uh, uh, when we divided 10 divided by 5, the dividend uh, was larger than the quotient, or the quotient was smaller than the dividend right here. But when we divided by numbers that were smaller right here, all of a sudden the quotient is bigger than the dividend right here. And since um, uh, one sixth is smaller than a half, then the quotient will be larger when we divide by the smaller number, one sixth. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense and take care.